いいか超能力を持ってるからといって一人の人間であることに変わりはない足が速い勉強ができる体臭が強いなどと一緒で超能力も単なる特徴の一つに過ぎない個性として受け入れて前向きに生きていくしかないんだ魅力の本質は人間味だいいやつになれ以上 This is one of the most important lines in all of Mob Psycho 100. Ever since season 1, this line has led to everything that occurs in the journey of Kageyama Shigeo in Mob Psycho 100. It encompasses everything Mob, our main character, ended up growing to believe and was constantly referenced throughout the show, where we learn the various contexts under which it was said and how the messages apply. In the end, it was the resolution of the conflict from this line that gave closure to the stories of our main characters. But perhaps I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Welcome! After watching all of Mob Psycho 100 and seeing the ending, I very emotionally decided that it was one of my favorite shows ever. I don't think we'll see a show as well put together with as much heart as Mob Psycho 100, with the consistent level of high production and insane peaks of animation all done together at the same level for a very long time. I think that's something truly to be celebrated. The success of Mob Psycho, the consistency of both. Both its story and its production, all the way to the series ending, almost feels like a rare success story in this age of anime. Even if it took almost seven years to get here, I truly believe what it managed to do was give us one of the most satisfying coming of age stories in anime itself. So, let's talk about it. Mob Psycho 100 is a story of a boy called Kageyama Shigeo, also known as Mob, who possesses psychic powers far too great for a boy his age. As a result, he stopped using them. The world's powers are linked to human emotions such that a stronger emotion leads to more psychic power, so this also ended up meaning that he suppressed his emotions altogether. As a result, he grew up to be the type of kid that didn't form social relationships, one sitting in a corner of the class, a part of the going home early club. It is the journey of Mob finding meaningful relationships in his life and understanding the true use of his powers. From the outside, his journey from Season 1 to the end of the series might look like one small step, but the effort taken and relationships formed through them are as genuine as they get. At the start of the first season, Mob is just a young boy with strong psychic powers. That isn't to say that he didn't have a big heart back then, just the only person capable of appreciating him then was Regan Arataka, the guy who fooled Mob into doing his hard work for him. It's this part of the story that makes us feel bad for Mob and makes It's difficult to like Reagan. Mob at the time is just a kid who knows nothing about the real world, overly trusting and easily used. Reagan, on the other hand, is the closest thing in the story to a con man power fantasy, someone who could argue his way out of basically any situation, a man with the utter power to convince someone that they needed something. The story did really paint Reagan in the picture of someone that would stop at nothing to achieve his purpose and use Mob all the way through. In reality, though, that isn't who the man named Reagan was. As proven in season 2, Reagan was always just a good person. Yes, he might be using his student mob for his own purpose. Yes, he might be leading his clients astray to an extent, but he doesn't actually cause them any harm. Most of his methods involve making the customer satisfied in one way or another. He isn't doing anything different to a normal massage parlor. And yes, while he might be misleading the occasional client, now that mob is around, even that Part of the formula is sorted. He is also extremely capable of seeing through other scams, such as when he told Mob to not join the telepathy club or when Mob broke that vase in season one. It's because he has the ability to smell people similar to him. He can help Mob in these tough situations and ensure he doesn't get caught up in them. Season one doesn't exactly show us this side of the story though. Mob is more alone at the start of the story, with his one and only desire to be noticed by the girl of his dreams, Takane Tsubomi. He starts his journey of bettering himself as a person. 
At this point in the story, Mob is no one without his powers. He didn't have any close friends or any attribute that stood out from just mediocre or just straight up bad, whether that was sports, socialising or studies. As a result, it makes that much more sense that every relationship Mob manages to form is essentially due to his psychic powers. To put it more cynically, the only reason people around him even bothered taking interest in him was because he was someone with psychic powers. Add that to the fact that he was just a pushover and that's where his relationships with Reagan, Dimple and to a lesser extent Mizato and Karata come in. At the very least, that is the starting point of some of his most important relationships in this anime. Mob Psycho 100 is a fantastic display of such flawed characters though. Everyone around Mob is so much closer to how real people act and behave. They're selfish. Although a little overblown for the sake of it, that in itself makes them authentic. It makes the experience that much more believable and worth investing in and much more rewarding to come around to those same characters later on in the story. Despite it being a parody of the fantasy shonen genre, it only ever remains that on the surface. When it comes down to it, Mob Psycho 100 is and always has been the journey of Mob maturing and finding himself. Everyone around him was twisted in some way or the other, but if there were any truly good people in this anime, it was the members of the body improvement club. If not only for the sheer vibes and positivity, there was always a way they found themselves in the various arcs of the story. If you really think about it though, there is a very good reason for their existence. Not only as friends for Mob, but these are some of the only people in the entire story that actually have a purpose in their life. It is a perfect and non-intrusive contrast to the cast and a display of what people who actually have goals in their life look and feel like. Instead of these swore bros in every anime being the type to go and pick fights around the town, the Body Improvement Club is one of the best explorations of this character archetype with their sheer commitment to actually improving their bodies with their friends. Not every side character in this show is equally sketchy though. There are two notable exceptions to the characters that actually pass as decent human beings, with almost no strings attached to them, those being Kageyama Ritsu and Hanazawa Teruki. And no, I'm not gonna pretend that Ritsu's little antagonistic arc in season 1 where he framed people in an attempt to clean out the school wasn't bad, but at the end of the day, that's not who Ritsu is. It was actually a really interesting arc when it comes down to it because of the parallels it had to Mob himself. Everyone knows that the student council is the absolute ultimate peak of power, so I can't really blame Ritsu for getting drunk on that power. The likes he'd never seen before. The same power he felt like he hasn't had ever since he was a kid looking up to his brother. Ritsu's journey to me was a small scale representation of what Mob could do if he also managed to get carried away with his incredible powers. Ultimately though, we get to learn more about Kagema Ritsu through his initial arc. Someone who excels at almost every aspect in his life but falls short in that one aspect he wants to excel at. Someone who looks up to his brilliantly powerful older brother but also harbours a great fear towards him. He could have easily turned into someone Mob had to overcome as a part of the journey. At some points in season 1, it definitely looked like that was the way the story was written but that conflict gets resolved in arguably an even better way. He learns his place in the world of psychic powers, in the same way he learns just how strong his brother Shigeo really is. His fear towards his elder brother was justified and his reasonings for wanting psychic powers were also very understandable, so seeing him go from being scared of Mob to actually becoming the younger brother that admires him in the right ways over the course of the story is a very fulfilling journey for Ritsu's character. More importantly, let's talk about one of the best side characters in the entire show according to me, Hanazawa Teruki. I very easily think of him as the first true person in the entire story Mob could call a friend. Starting from where he did bullying local gangs using his psychic powers, Teruki is one of the first of many examples of Mob's ideology in the anime getting challenged. He is introduced to us as one of the first other psychics in the anime but the kind that is up to no good, which thinking about it in the the context of the anime, I can't really remember any psychics that were up to any good, but I digress. Teruki was obsessed with himself and his powers and wanted to stand on top of the world using them. After confronting Mob though, he, like basically every other psychic in the show, gets taught how far below he is in the world. Not only in terms of pure psychic power, but also in his mentality. 
mob showed him how truly weak he was, having to rely on his power to gain the approval of the people around him. After Mob teaches him that though, and completely annihilates the first set of his hair, we get to see Teruki's character truly shine through. Although he called himself Mob's rival in Season 3, he was Mob's first true friend. One that came to appreciate Mob's view of the world and helped him whenever he was in trouble. Whether that was when Ritu was being a bully or straight up invading the base of Claw. While being part of one of the funniest gags in the entire series with the top of his head, Hanazawa Teruki is the first sign of heart in the story of Mob Psycho 100. Someone that got converted by Mob and came to respect Mob through his experience. Hanazawa is just one of the many obstacles in Mob's way that he converts to the good side though. The main conflict found in every single arc in the show to some degree is to do with Mob and his usage of powers. It all ultimately leads back to the very important first encounter Mob and Reagan had, which formed the foundation of Mob's values. The first of which comes in Season 1 against the 7th Division of Claw, which was one of the first times Mob ends up breaking his most important rule. When faced with other powerful psychics, he realizes that there is no way to resolve this problem without the use of his powers. Luckily for him though, this was the exact problem for Reagan to solve. This was the first time the value of Reagan in the story was clear. He was the exact person to resolve the conflict in the way it needed to be resolved. To tell grown ass adults how childish they truly sound to the outside world. Reagan's ability to talk is truly put to full use here and it is one of the first times Reagan is actually worth cheering on in this anime. Even if it is just using Mob's powers, Reagan steps up to the ridiculous challenge ahead of him and shows that he has a little bit of dependability in the situations he is in. Single handedly defeating the 7th division of Claw, Reagan actually bought himself that little bit of breathing room in the story as both Hanazawa and Ritsu, the people closest to Mob at the time, came around to his capabilities. It's funny that this was one of many instances of Mob saving Reagan once again, but in a weird way, I look back and I see both of them getting saved by each other in their own ways. The first season, however, was merely a glimpse of how deep Mob Psycho 100 could truly get. I think it's true in the story that everyone that ends up being a villain is in some way unfortunate in the way the world treated them. Such is the case with the members of Claw and later Mogami Keiji. But the key difference is the naive mentality of the members of Claw. They never actually tried to better themselves or learn how to live in the world. Instead, they chose the path of least resistance in defying the structure of the world itself. As important as it was that they get taught the error of their ways, it was also just as important to see all those characters try and make amends. While season 1 was entertaining on its own, the story only truly reaches the highest of its peaks in season 2. This season was full of some of the most interesting arcs in this entire story. From the start with Mogami Keiji, one of the best antagonists in the show, to Reagan's arc, to finally the fight against Claw's leader, Suzuki Toichiro, Season 2 was perhaps the best Mob Psycho 100 had to offer as an anime on all its fronts and I am a firm believer that Season 3 does nothing but add to the quality portrayed in the second season, but perhaps I'm getting ahead of myself here. The first arc was perhaps the most thought provoking of them all. Mogami Keiji is one of the most understandable cases of antagonists in this anime. Having access to tremendous psychic powers, he was cheated by the world he lived in. He was driven to a point of giving giving up on the world around him and decided to live as a powerful evil spirit. It was nothing like the members of Claw. As far as he goes, Mogami Keiji is a reflection of Mob without everyone around Mob supporting him. A threat far too big for the world to ignore. A psychic with the power to destroy the world at his own will. I am glad the parodic nature of Mob Psycho 100 didn't soften the impact of this moment in the anime. This arc was real. This was also one of the first Mob Psycho villains where talking wasn't really going to work. We clearly saw Mob try and fail miserably. 
Mob being trapped in the real world without his friends around him was such an interesting arc too. It further highlighted the darkness in the world around him and just how likely he was to become just some bully's errand boy for the rest of his middle school life. The powerful are the ones that can control others. This was the belief guiding Mogami Keiji and as far as beliefs go, it rings true to a certain extent. So much so that Mob almost succumbed to this belief in the fake world. If not for the powers of the almighty Dimple, he wouldn't have remembered everyone close to him in his life. The reason Mob is able to pursue a life where he doesn't need to use his powers is because of everyone he's managed to surround himself with. Although those relationships hadn't bloomed into their authentic self yet in season 2, it made sense for Mob to perceive them in the way he did and for the feelings to save him from his own despair. At the end of the day, Mob manages to break out of the fake world and contain Mogami's evil spirit. But there is no doubt on the impact it left on Mob himself. The arc following with Reagan immediately after is somehow everything I ever wanted from his character and more. Like seriously, if season 3 didn't exist, I think this arc on its own redeems Reagan in this story. Which makes it sound like I hate him or something, I don't, I just think this arc made him a significantly better character. And it does it by actually putting him to the ground. Mob and Reagan's relationship was fake at least up until Reagan truly understood what it meant to him. So far it was just about him using Mob for his own benefit. Where he truly fucked up was when he grew conceited with just how easily he could use Mob. After the one episode of the start with the small family, Mob had already grown uneasy about his relationship with Reagan and being reliant on his guidance. Even if the act of student and master was being played out, there was no doubt changes to Mob himself. As he grew, he understood more about the world around him and had actually started making meaningful progress in his own life, both physically and socially. For Reagan, however, he made the fatal mistake of going too far in preaching. They fell apart. It's funny that from Mob's point of view, he was so high on the slope of self-improvement that he meant this as an opportunity to learn more on his own, without the guidance of his master that teaches him everything. To Reagan though, this was tragic. It becomes painfully clear how knee-deep he is into the business with basically no qualifications. Ever since Mob met him, he was the one solo carrying the business on his back. Without Mob, Reagan is nothing but a liar, a con artist that takes money without dealing with the root of the client's problems. When the truth about Reagan came out to the world, I felt really bad for him. Even if he was the type of character to rise to the challenge given to him, seeing him at wit's end is a bittersweet experience. On one hand, the lesson in humility is one that needed to be given to Reagan anyway, he had grown far too comfortable having Mob around and in no way was this relationship going to last in the same way for much longer. It reminded Reagan that Mob might be gullible and kind but he isn't exactly stupid. This is where we see Reagan's side of the first encounter with Mob though. A man who just started this business on a whim, got bored of deceiving his customers and decided to move on with his life. But just then, a young Mob saved him and at the same time kept him in the shady business he's been part of this entire time. This reveal made him significantly more likeable though. It also made it that much harder to see his fall from grace. The truth is that Reagan's whole purpose so far was formed on guiding Mob through his troubles and learning how screwed he would be without Mob is truly a beautiful arc and who better to save him and get him out of his troubles than Mob himself. It was truly one of the highest emotional peaks in Mob Psycho 100, a moment that reflected both Mob and Reagan's understanding of the situation. Mob always knew that Reagan was just a good person this whole time. The final arc of season 2 does deserve credit in its own right though. From the emotional peak of the series, we got given the arc that is arguably the cinematic peak right after it. That isn't to say that there isn't emotional depth to it, but I'm not here to ignore the insane teleporting shenanigans as well as the buildings flying towards people fighting in this arc either. They went insanely hard, and definitely for the right reasons. Claw was the ultimate villain organization being built up throughout the series so far so it's no wonder that the final boss is the leader of Claw, Suzuki Toichiro. 
it made just as much sense that he was the strongest person Mob has had to fight so far. And in the same way, one of the people that is hardest to talk out of their ideas. Talking to people has been the solution so far when it comes to it, but it is also an important lesson that sometimes being nice is not an option. There is a time and place to talk things out and reach that level of understanding, and that is the ideal path to pursue, but sometimes there is no room for that. Even if Mob was able to talk things out with Serizawa, when it came to Toichiro, there was nothing left to do but prove he was stronger. At the end, he proved exactly that. Surprise to no one, I'm sure, because Mob Psycho never really claimed itself to be a battle shonen. The stakes of the fight weren't as important as the final moment Mob shared with Toichiro. At the end, it was Mob who held the belief that everyone, including the person he is forced to fight to save the world right now, has that little bit of hope of redemption in their life. Everyone can find their place in the world. Season 2's end was one where I was satisfied never seeing Mob Psycho 100 ever again. Everything in this season, including the final fight, was perfect. The choreography, the animation, the sentiment, I was worried they'd have to surpass literal perfection in season 3. What we got in season 3 though was also just perfection. The first thought I had while watching season 3 is that it felt a lot like Rick and Morty, and I genuinely mean this in the nicest way possible. With the world-threatening overlord Dimple, the yokai hunter arc, and the random episode with aliens descending onto Earth, I actually really liked the easygoing nature of the plot in season 3. The feeling of taking a step back from all the danger and having arcs with the characters we've known right from the start felt right in its own ways. The season itself was the character payoff arc for Mob himself. Having overcome the world ending threat in season 2, this was the season of looking ahead, one of thinking about his future, and treasuring the friends he'd made so far. Whether that was the passionate members of the Body Improvement Club, the excitement of Mizato wanting to become a god, or the terrible fashion sense of Teruki, Mob was now surrounded by people that actually liked him for who he was. Not only for his psychic powers, but actually as a person. He'd come far from the days of season 1. The work he had to put in to improve himself had finally started paying off for good. He had friends. He'd started feeling like he'd finally become a popular kid in his school. And this spawned Chad Mob, and honestly that was great. Things were looking good for young Mob in this season, but the one character who actually got the short end of the stick so far throughout the entire series was the one I think I got to appreciate the most. Dimple starts out the show like almost every other character in the story. Someone who sees Mob's insane psychic prowess and decides to use Mob to take over the world for himself. It's not like Dimple hadn't had his fair share of good character moments so far either. I think over the arcs, Dimple has proven himself to be a force in the battles they've found themselves in, and it feels weird but somehow you know that no matter what happens to him, he's gonna find a way out of his tough situation and be back later. His intentions however, even in season 3, were just as shady as day 1. Even despite helping Mob so far, he still wanted to fulfill his mission of taking over the world. So when the opportunity presented itself, he did exactly that. Brainwashing being his speciality and all, once he channeled the power of the people's prayers towards the giant broccoli in the middle of the town, well what a statement, he himself became God. Enter God Dimple, strong enough to overcome Mob and now the new biggest threat to humanity. All he truly wanted was Mob to join him on his journey. After brainwashing the entire city into believing into the psycho helmet god he'd created, all that was remaining was to convince Mob. Dimple's downfall, however, was his own attachment to Mob. They fought, and even if it looked like Mob was going to succumb to the new and all-powerful Dimple, the truth, I think, was always evident. Dimple never really cared about this world domination stuff anyway. All he truly wanted was a friend. Finally, he came to understand what mattered the most to him. Even taking over the world left him empty and unfulfilled because he wanted to do it with Mob, not against him. There was no need to fight anymore. Dimple's arc of understanding had ended. It's even funnier that what started the whole process was the fact that Dimple was the first and only person to tell Mob how ugly his shirt was, but at the end of it, both Mob and Dimple knew that there was nothing to be gained by fighting each other anymore. As they were about to leave the tree and go home though, what followed was one of the most 
gut-wrenching scenes in the entire anime. The tree and its energy had become conscious and Dimple was the only one who could deal with that threat at hand. This was the first time he managed to use and succeed in brainwashing Mob. Seeing Dimple fight the tree and forcing it out into space was one of the saddest moments in the series yet. Dimple had come around to his existence and his dreams and his arc was over here. It still made me yearn for the wholesome friendship between him and Mob from here on outwards but it felt like the right bittersweet end to his journey. Until he was back eventually but I have to say I did appreciate the whole arc whether he came back or not. The last arc of the series was honestly not what I expected it to be. After a sudden announcement that his childhood friend and current crush Tsubomi was moving away from the city, Mob was forced into manning up and confessing his love for her, alongside the other 200 boys in the same class as him of course. This arc was weird, the main reason being it featured that one character that somehow stayed relevant all throughout the anime with probably the lowest screen time possible. Takane Tsubomi was definitely that character that whenever the other people in the anime talked about her, she seemed like a questionable figure. The type of person to go home during a game of hide and seek or the one that doesn't in the slightest care for any of her classmates. Even when we got a little insight in her mind with the consultation with Reagan, she seemed like the type of person that Mob would have no chance with anyway. The confession was bound to fail, this much was obvious. She was also the only person to grow bored of Mob showing off his psychic powers. That being said though, this final arc did show a great side of her character. After rejecting basically every single boy at her school, she still had the decency to entertain Mob when he called her out. Even if she knew the gist of the situation, she gave him the time of day. And even when a literal natural disaster was brewing, she stayed right there in the park believing that Mob would actually show up. At the end though, she rejects Mob too. It is worthy to note that throughout the journeys of Mob, Tsubomi was actually clued in for most of it, and she actually understood Mob to a certain extent, which is also why she gave him the respect of meeting up outside at the park anyway. I know a lot of people may not have liked the rejection, but for me it was the natural course of action. Mob worked hard to improve himself and he got to a point where he got the confidence to confess, but at this point in time, there was never going to be a yes. It is worthy to note that Mob and Tsubomi did end up getting closer as friends as a result of this confession enough for them to talk over the phone, thus opening up the option of dating in the future, but whether that happens or not, the arc in itself is beautiful just the way it is. But that isn't all that happened in the final arc though. We got the final conclusion to Mob's internal struggle with himself, as well as the closure to all the other characters in the story too. After question mark percentage takes over Mob's body, we see him become a walking natural disaster. Or to put it another way, up until now, Mob had to take care of the danger, but now he was the danger. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really bad joke. Anyway, question mark percentage had the strong conviction to go and see Tsubomi and proceeds to destroy everything in the path towards that goal. In an attempt to stop Mob though, we see a bunch of characters reaching their final point in their arcs. Hanazawa Teruki, my goat, finally being able to call himself Mob's rival, the members of Claw all trying to stop him too, Ritsu finally getting over the fear of his brother and reaching his own 100% and even Suzuki Toichi deciding to stop Mob with everything he has to offer but deciding to keep living for the sake of his wife and child. This final arc encompassed every character reaching their moment of development in this series, Mob himself included. The internal struggle of Mob was simple, it was one that needed to be solved too. The side of Mob that he sealed away when he hurt Ritsu in an accident they had as children, the side that uses his psychic powers and contains all his human emotions wanted to be free. Even when Reagan finally appeared to help Mob, the Shigeo side of Mob showed that he always knew that he was being deceived. At the end, it was Reagan's confession that was able to help and stop Mob. One that proves that Reagan is finally able to accept who he is and put an end to the charade with Mob once and forever. Although Reagan was lovable enough at this point in the anime, this scene was a moment of growth for him too, similar to the one in season 2. It was the closure we needed for his relationship with Mob and his own acceptance of himself.
He also made Mob realize that he could coexist with his powers and the side of himself he was trying to suppress. That the people around him would be there no matter what, despite his overwhelming powers being a threat. Because at the end of the day, what matters is the heart of the person that is using the powers. And Mob has found himself what the right way to use his powers are. It's also this reassurance that lets him handle the rejection from Tsubomi headstrong because he knew how far he'd come on his journey. I've heard season 3 being called one big epilogue to the show and I think that sentiment is pretty accurate. In many ways, after watching season 3, I grew a deeper appreciation for all things that happened in season 2, which I still believe is one of the best seasons of the show in every single way. Season 3 was the closing act that I think was actually very important in tying up the loose strings, giving some slice of life to the already slice of life world of Mob Psycho 100, where there was no real threats from the outside but it's still didn't get you bored from the lack of happening. It was the payoff for Mob and all his relationships so far and eventually it was the final arc where everyone comes together to help Mob just as he has helped them all in the past. Only for Mob to finally be stopped by Reagan, the man arguably least competent to stop the walking natural disaster, by telling Mob exactly what he knew from the start anyway. Thus the journey of Mob came to an end. A journey full of self-doubt and fears to eventually conquering them and forming the relationships he always longed for. One of accepting yourself and gaining trust from the people around you. Ultimately, Mob Psycho 100 was always this journey of self-improvement and development hidden behind the clever mask of a power fantasy parody. One that hooked you in on the humour and action but kept you watching with his fantastic characters and development. That isn't to say that there isn't people who didn't stay for the humour and action either though, because as far as that goes, it also had those elements down to perfection too. The animation team went all out on every single scene, whether it was fight or not, and combined with the gags in the show, as well as the countless memes spawned from the various seasons, any reason you could find to stay was rewarded at the end. For me, and I imagine most others, the reason was the characters and specifically Mob's development and that was the aspect I ended up appreciating the most. In three short seasons with 36 total episodes, we got a story that far surpassed my expectations with some of the best animation characters, entertainment value and just about anything you could want from an anime. The surface level entertainment was top tier and so was the depth and nuance it managed to portray. At the end, it all comes together and gives us one of the best cast of lovable characters and a wholesome journey of growth. The author, one famously known for writing the stories of both Mob Psycho 100 and One Punch Man, said that he wanted Mob Psycho to be a big story about one small step. And yeah, that was basically the inspiration for my title. When looking from the outside, the progress made by Mob might just be one small step in his entire life, but as someone watching the anime and getting to see the small improvements made and the decisions taken, it definitely serves as one big story. It's only from watching the anime we can tell how different Shigeo Kageyama the boy is as a person at the end of the anime compared to where he started from. And I think this is exactly what the author one wanted to write. What's even more impressive is that he managed to write it not only just for Mob but also for the other characters in the story. Everyone has some important lessons they end up learning in their life and overcoming their difficulties. It ultimately makes the very inspirational statement that everyone can find their redemption in their own life and find a way forward. Everyone just needs one small step in the right direction. Thank you for watching.